13 is here with us and of course it has set the debate rolling on whether it has been a good launch or well it has been a disappointing launch by Apple standards. Now the iPhone 13 is the latest iPhone that Apple has and it does bring a few new things to the table but on the face of it, it has kind of remained similar to what Apple had offered with the iPhone 12. On this note, we take a look at whether you should buy the iPhone 13 if you're a first time iPhone buyer, if whether you should buy the iPhone 13 if you are upgrading from an old generation iPhone or if you use the iPhone 12 already, what all features of the new phone do you already have with yourself? Just taking a look at how the iPhone 13 fares in comparison to the iPhone 12 and whether it makes sense as an upgrade. it would be safe to say that the iPhone 13 is not exactly an all-new smartphone. You see, the design has obviously remained very, very similar to what the iPhone 12 already was. It retains the flat sides and it retains a fairly familiar layout. But in terms of new design elements, the iPhone 13 and 13 mini get a new pink color variant, which might seem nice if you are into that kind of a color shade. And along with that, it has a slightly smaller notch, which isn't exactly apparent at first, but when you put the two iPhones side by side, you realize that the size difference in the notch is there indeed. Now, apart from that, the phones look pretty identical until you turn them into the back side, where you find that the iPhone 13 has diagonal cameras. Now, whether this is a design choice only or not is already up for debate, but Apple has stated that it has given the iPhone 13 new sensors, in fact new bigger camera sensors. Along with that, most importantly, they have offered sensor shift optical image stabilization with the iPhone 13 and 13 mini as well. Which means that the cameras will offer better low light photography and true to itself, Apple has brought night mode to all the cameras on the iPhone 13 range, even including the iPhone 13 mini. Now, this means that in terms of camera performance, the 13 and 13 mini should be better than the iPhone 12. However, whether it is revolutionarily better is something that remains to be seen. But in terms of videography, of course, Apple has brought cinematic mode with automatic rack focus shifting to the iPhone 13 range, which is something that people who shoot a lot of videos with the iPhone will like, and it's only them who will really, really like it. Apart from that, well, there isn't exactly anything revolutionary, but yes, the iPhone 13 does offer two and a half hours of longer battery life and the iPhone 13 mini offers an hour and a half of longer battery life. Even all of these things considered, you might say that, is it really a big upgrade? Well, if you are upgrading from maybe an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 8 or even an iPhone 10, the iPhone 13 might still make sense for you to upgrade to. Apple has also discontinued the iPhone 12, which means that if you want the new generation iPhone design and experience, you will have to go for the 13 only. So if you are upgrading from an older generation iPhone, it's only then that it makes sense. However, Apple has not given the 120Hz ProMotion display to the iPhone 13 and 13 mini, which means that if you are upgrading or planning to switch from an Android ecosystem, you might want to consider an alternate flagship Android phone at this price point for getting features such as the fast refresh rate display and as well as comparable cameras. Now, when it comes to the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro Max, the only real thing that Apple has really done is give it a camera upgrade. You see, all the three sensors on the iPhone 13 are new, which means that they are also bigger and Apple says that they are obviously going to be better. Now, night mode, of course, comes to all the cameras, but if you are really into videography, along with the new cinematic mode rack focus shifting, Apple has also given the ability for iPhone 13 Pro series devices to record 4K 30fps ProRes videos, which is lossless videos and shoot them directly onto your phone and also edit them directly from your phone. Now, this is something that's going to appeal to a very niche subset of users, which means that unless you are really that much into videography, the iPhone 13 Pro remains somewhat similar to what the iPhone 12 Pro has already on offer. 
Now, of course, the big difference here is ProMotion, and as a result, the iPhone 13 Pro series gets adaptable fast refresh rate from 10 Hz to 120 Hz. Now, that is something that Apple did not bring to the rest of the iPhone lineup, which is something that we don't particularly think was a good option, especially considering that 120 Hz displays and 90 Hz displays have become common even in the budget range of Android smartphones. Apart from that, well, the iPhone 13 Pro does claim to offer slightly better battery life in the same drill as before, at such as 1.5 hours of better battery life in the iPhone 13 Pro and 2.5 hours of better battery life in the iPhone 13 Pro Max in comparison to their predecessors, which is the 12 series. Which means that if you already have the iPhone 12 Pro or Pro Max, there is absolutely no reason for you to upgrade. And even if you have the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max, there isn't exactly a massive reason for you to already jump onto the bandwagon unless you really need that smooth refresh rate and you don't mind splurging on a new hardware. Apart from that, however, there is no real reason for you to upgrade straight away to the iPhone 13 Pro series and maybe the next generation of iPhone is going to bring a better jump in terms of design as well as features for you to consider it then. Only consider the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max if you really have the budget for it and you want the new generation iPhone experience and you are still stuck on a device such as the iPhone 7 Plus or the iPhone 8 Plus.